Gallery 1 CO3 recognizes the harms of the past caused by colonial institutions, including universities, galleries, and museums. And it is Gallery 1 CO3's intention to move forward in a good way with Indigenous peoples. I also want to give gratitude for our water, which comes from Shoal Lake 40 First Nation. So for today's event, the moderator will pose a series of questions to the artists and uh, we anticipate the conversation running for around 40 to 45 minutes. We will then be open to questions from the audience. So I encourage you to um, submit your questions to the Q&A, which is at the bottom of your screen. And a couple of housekeeping items before we begin. We have ASL interpretation and captioning. Thanks very much to Jennifer Horvath, Horvath for providing the ASL interpretation today. This event will be recorded and it will be made available on Gallery 1CO3's YouTube playlist in about one week's time. So now it's my pleasure to introduce panel, panel moderator, Dr. Sandy Poole. Sandy Poole, she, they, is a queer essayist, essayist, poet, and professor of creative writing. Her first collection of poetry, Exploding Into Night, was nominated for the Governor General's Award for Poetry. Her second poetry collection, Undark, an Oratorio, was nominated for Ontario's Trillium Award for Poetry, an Alberta Book Award, and a Toronto Arts Award. Her third book, If Body, Freedom, a book of lyric nonfiction essays is currently represented by Avitas Creative Management in New York. Essays from this book have been anthologized in the Best Canadian Essays 2024 and nominated for a Pushcart Prize. She's also been awarded fellowships to Yaddo, the Burton House, and the Siena Arts Institute and Dora Maar House in France. She's taught English and creative writing at a variety of post-secondary institutions in Canada, the United States, and the United Kingdom including teaching in the MFA program at the University of East Anglia in Norwich, UK. She divides her time between Canada and New York. So I'm gonna, with that, pass it over to Sandy to uh, introduce us to the artists. Thank you so much. Thanks so much for having me. I'm so excited to be here. I just have to say um, that I there was no way that I could say no to moderating this because it was so, um, it was just such a moving piece of, of art. And for me, being a multidisciplinary artist too, I was just really excited to talk to you all today about this piece. Um, there's so much to talk about. It's so rich. Um, and especially because I'm Zooming you from my, my parents' family home and I'm going through my mother's journals, which I have right here, um, and thinking about grief and ghosts and all of these kind of ideas. I'm just, I'm really excited. Um, I wanted to start by just um, talking about the artists that are involved in this project. So uh, I'm going to read their bios and then uh, we're going to launch into a conversation. I'm going to ask them some questions until about 4.45 and then we'll open it up for uh, audience participation and audience questions. Uh, so we'll start with Christine Fellows. Um, maybe you can just wave. <laughs> Hi, Christine. Um, Christine Fellows finds music and sounds we tend to take for granted. The voices of people we love, the sounds of spaces we move through as part of our daily lives. Although she identifies primarily as a songwriter and a performer, her practice includes poetry, spoken word, paper collage, stop motion video, sound design, and composition. Over two decades, she has released eight solo albums and toured internationally, both as a solo artist and also as a collaborator from the Canadian Arctic to Southern Australia. Her latest solo album, which is called Stuff We All Get in 2022, uh, she created 13 songs alongside 13 stop motion videos. And, and you three have collaborated before as well on other projects. Is that correct? Did I get that? Not as a trio, so not as a trio. I and Chantelle and I, but then this was our first. Oh, this is your first three-way collab. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, Chantelle Miro, you can wave. Hi, Chantelle. Um, Chantelle Miro is a visual artist who is working in video and performance. Uh, her work examines the everyday, and a frequent focal point in her work is the body and clothing. Um, by strategically using repetition to either lull and comfort or build tension and suspense. 
Miro reckons with the comfort and discomfort of living in a body. I love that. Um, the comfort and discomfort of living in a body since graduated from the University of Manitoba with a bachelor's of fine arts in 2011. She has exhibited both no locally and nationally. Her recent work, Three Chores, was exhibited in Winnipeg at Platform Center for Phot Photographic and Digital Art in 2019 and was subsequently featured in Backflash magazine in 2020, which I know some of you, my students, uh, got a copy of uh, the Black Flash interview with the three of you also. So we'll talk about that too. Oh um, great. And last but not least, Jennifer Still. You can wave. Hi, Jennifer. <laughs> Jennifer Still composes poems with physicality. She's the author of several handmade chapbooks and three poetry books, Comma with Book Hug, Girlwood with Brick Books, and The Salta Saltations. I can't pronounce that. I've been practicing all day. That's the um, best way to pronounce it. It's <laughs> meant to be that way. <laughs> um, with thistle, I'm glad you said that. Um, mm -hmm. With Thistledown. Legs is a limited edition chapbook with Baseline Press, who is also really wonderful, Karen Schindler. Um, and the winner of the 2021 Malahat Review Long Poem Prize. Uh, in 2020, she collaborated with Christine Fellows on I Write with Fossils, a video poem exploration and the live action sewing video, Close Call with Chantal Miro. She was the 2015 Carol Shields Writer in Residence at the University of Winnipeg, which is a program that I now direct. Um, and that's where the first line of the legs remains looped through a ceiling tile. I want to hear more about that too. Um, <laughs> legs is an official selection of the Zebra Poetry Film Festival in Berlin, Germany in 2023. Um, welcome to all three of you. I'm so happy to be talking about this uh, film. And I guess for me, the, the first obvious question was just, um, I because I'd love to hear how collaborations happen. I always think they're just weird and whimsical and amazing. Um, so how did you come to this project? Or maybe we, I, I'd love to hear you each talk about this. Or how did the project come to you? Um, maybe we'll start with Jennifer because this started as a chat book. Um, mm -hmm. And then, uh, you know, you worked on it as a writer in the writer in residence. And then, of course, then you collaborated and made it into a, another version. So I'm curious to hear what was it about this particular text that made you think, ah, yes, this is an elegy on the page. And now I have to translate it into um, another format with multidisciplinary collaborators. How did that happen? I was thinking about this today because there's so many iterations of the poem and even lines that were started years ago that ended up coming in being pulled into it but I think it all boils down to learning how to write with the body for me so I do that um, on the page or in in tandem with doing a, a pretty vigorous exercise routine that seemed to bring me to language um, but then I also do that with the collaborators when we're kind of acting out the poem. So learning how to write with the body um, through words, through saying, saying the poem out loud, learning how to register it within myself and say it, and then um, perhaps kind of wearing the poem, you know, um, wearing its materials, wearing its atmospheres, um, gesturing it. So, so I think that's the through line through all of the iterations. But basically, yeah, when I when after after I did write the poem, which was really about just trying to be at home and myself, I think um, trying to after after I lost my mother, I was trying to, I guess, build some strength in many ways. But one of them ended up being through um, an exercise group that the three of us joined called spaghetti and meatballs <laughs> I join this group by the way sign me up it sounds oh, really fun hey, you're in you're already in <laughs> oh, amazing, amazing. be careful what you ask for. do you it's have fun. badges i would like i would like a badge we do we do oh, amazing <laughs> we even have a bag we even have a tote bag we have it all <laughs> love so, it the main, yeah, so we I just I think I want to do like kind of a shout out to our like lovely um leader of spaghetti and meatballs um who who helps us weekly find strength in ourselves physically, which I think um resonates through all of our pursuits in life. 
So uh, Robin Edge, thank you. <laughs> so yeah, I, I wrote this poem. I wrote it on a retreat and really quite quickly in, in five days. That's very fast for me. Really? Of course it changed, but it was just a really intense time. And I, I really, really say that I came to those words because I was um, learning how to feel strength and build muscle in myself in many ways and be okay with, um, with, I don't know, weirdly, all of the shames and embarrassments and everything about living in a body, you know, just kind of oh, accepting oneself. Anyway, write the poem. I share it with my, with my dear friends. And uh, Christine and I had recently done the a poem stop motion collaboration. So we had brought my words to life in a visual way together and really played with language in that collaboration. Um, so when I showed her this poem and her response was just, she, you know, she connected with it, we talked about it. And of course we're walking, we're walking and coming up with ideas of how we might continue our, our work together in, with using a, using a poem as a um, jumping off point, using text as the foundation of the ground and then lifting it from there. I mean, Christine does it in her music with her lyrics. She lifts from there into visuals. And, and we, and it was just an automatic, you heard Chantel's bio. <laughs> it was, uh, Chantel and I had recently done our sewing video to textiles. And it was right away, we said, let's ask, let's ask Chantel. And, and that was the first time the three of us had ever worked together, but it was always, I think it was always through the poem because I, I, I remember I was in this room and I sent the poem to you um, by email. And within a lot, like very quick period of time, you wrote back to me with images. Mm. I even remember what they are. Oh, I don't remember Wait, they that. They didn't end up, you did. <laughs> Can I say what one was? Cause it's yeah, really fun. Part. It's, it was, um, she goes, I see a spider plant with legs oh, dancing around. I think there's gotta be plants. <laughs> <laughs> and and I was I was just kind of vibrating because that like didn't I I didn't know where that came from but I trusted it and actually there's a lot of botanical like sprouting of limbs so now looking back I know where you came but anyway the the response was so immediate and so kind of limitless that it just the energy the energy took us that was a really long answer <laughs> <laughs> I, but I feel like when I see the video and when I think about the way the looping and the way that the images are coming together with the text and what you, you know, got rid of in text that you maybe put in and images and vice versa and what came out and what, like, did you feel like this collaboration was somehow preordained? Because that's how I felt when I saw it. I thought, well, this is preordained somehow. I'm, I'm curious about how that yeah, Jen, you said an immediate yes, and that's how it, it felt to me when I got that. I was like, yeah, this is up my alley. This is something I want to be involved in. Like, I don't, yeah, it was always a, a yes. Mm. And can you share the story about the the long legs to address the oh. preordained? Because Chantal had already a, a yeah. piece of the costume that's made. What I yeah. Yeah, I had worked on a... a a video project years ago and I did a residency in Lethbridge and took some video and made these long legs and the vi I never could get the video it never went anywhere I just kind of abandoned it it never got finished and but I had the legs <laughs> in storage <laughs> these long legs where when I walked in them my feet became my knees and then the the like the rest of the calves sort of drag behind me and so I brought these to we had a little get together a little collage night and uh I brought the legs there and put them on and we just laughed and laughed <laughs> ridiculous yeah so yeah yeah there it's funny how things come back mm -hmm. loop around mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah let's talk about let's talk about metaphors I mean not just I, I love the nylons obviously the nylons filled with non-leg things non-leggy things um I particularly loved the um 
uh, the crumpled paper gave it really like mm -hmm. crumpled <laughs> objects inside the nylon. So really amazing, but also the more subtle metaphors, like this seemed like, um, and I think you just said it, you said it, we had so much fun. And I feel mm -hmm. like this whole project was about like all elegy, but also about like joy and finding humor. And, and I feel like the play was there with the metaphors. So like, I, I also like the constant, juxtaposition between like the numbers being sparklers on a cake and then the kind of decrepit wall in the background so you always have that kind of metaphor line that contrast going um it seems like that is the elegy to me in a sense like the elegy can be reverent but also really irreverent at the same time so I'm curious about how, how did you choose um a metaphorical field for this piece how did that happen was it an organic process you know we'll use this we'll discard this i noticed you said that the cake was mm -hmm. taken out of the poem but was in the video and I'm, I'm just super curious to hear more about how the metaphors i think my poet students will want to know too how do the metaphors work in this piece how did you design them how did they come out i think that's the great part is that we we didn't approach it with that idea at all you know that we are gonna we're gonna show you know don't even know what to say, like elegy through these, these numbers or home through. What we did was we followed the poem. <laughs> really, it's this simple and kind of extraordinary. We listened to it and we represented it in a way that the, I think the three of us, it, it, it's, it, it landed like for the three of us. Um, and then, and then out of that, um then the world as you say kind of chose it you know like the wind would pick up and show us oh my gosh we're working with a shadow <laughs> yeah. because the shadow is swimming and kicking in the empty swimming pool right or the you know yeah we'd we arrived to the pool and it's been vandalized and the most interesting backdrop visually without thinking about metaphor entirely you know to consciously is appealing turquoise wall because it's beautiful right so I think for me I'd love to hear from is following following beauty mm. um and rendering pain through that to following following beauty to the tangible so oh and even sometimes is um the practical right because yes. it's like 38 degrees at the bottom of a concrete swimming pool and Poor Christine, you know? So is this going to work? Because, yeah, it was so gross. <laughs> <laughs> so what practically can actually work? I'm pleased. <laughs> I love that image, by the way, of the roller skates moving through the empty swimming pool, like on their own with the pool noodles. I mean, it's like, that's, it was spectacular. How does that, how does that work with music? Would you say, uh, Christine, I'm, I'm super curious. Like, how did you... Uh, how did that, what was the process like for you? Well, the music, thank you for that question. That's, there's music in everything as I, as I firmly believe, but especially to me, the music is the poem and the way that Jen in particular speaks. So it's like, that's the first music, the first music. And for me as a, as a writer also, it was a real gift to be able to, take it and we edited in the air. We didn't edit on the page because we took the poem from, I think it was about almost 30 minutes when it was recorded end to end in its full iteration. And uh, that was a terrifying idea to me is I thought we were making a stop motion piece. And I was like, oh my God, we're going to be doing this for 10,000 years. <laughs> 10,000 years of this project of us just like click. And then, okay, we got four seconds guys. You know, that, you know, one of those. Yeah. 10,000 years. Yeah. 10,000 years. Like, how, so <laughs> the music kind of started with that removal. I think oh. music, the sound of it, of us realizing what we could let fall away. Mm -hmm. That's when the music started bubbling up. And then Jen, genius Jen, um, <laughs> took her, had her phone with her when she was visiting her mother-in-law in the hospital. Um, and there was this weird sound outside the her mother-in-law's hospital room that she her mother-in-law was like, it's voices, it's a choir, it's a choir singing. But it was the wind. 
the wind uh, singing through a metal sign. Mm -hmm. And Jen brought this recording. And to me, it was like, it was a choir. It was the, you know, that, ma like it was that magic, the first clue of like, when you're trying to find what the, what's the musical sound of this place, of this piece, what is it? Mm -hmm. And it was that eerie, beautiful sound, like, mm -hmm. but this is, so it all came from this guy, mm -hmm. this little guy, this little <laughs> ring. Mm -hmm. And what about um, Chantel in terms of the images? Was it that, was that process like also, like it sounds like the way you're describing it, I love this. This is how also how I operate, I think as a writer is like happy accidents, like not necessarily, I always say this to my students, like maybe you're not even conscious of what it is that you're doing when you do it. That's what you do when you ask for a grant. But when you're writing it, you just <laughs> write, right? You don't think. Yes, yes. you got it. You yeah. got it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> training for the Olympics you don't think about the training you just run right and it's like that's was it like a happy accident for you Chantel as well did you feel like you the images that you found were happy accidents sometimes yes and sometimes um I have a little bit of a reputation of being the how person <laughs> of like it's of, well, like okay <laughs> how how is how's this gonna um, and back to those practical concerns, like visual art, so mm. much of it has to somehow live in the world and like not topple over or not hurt somebody or <laughs> not that we had that problem, but um, yeah, that it, you have to physically get it to hold together somehow. Mm. Luckily, like Jen, there are so many times where you brought materials though, and it, we went to the fabric store together mm -hmm. at, near the beginning. And and so again, having the poem in you guiding us, I don't, we, I, we've never really talked about this part, but like, I feel like the color palette came from there and we just sort of like refined it. Like it was walking through the fabric store and Jen going like, oh, I like this, I like this. and. Like, hmm. what about these three together? And hmm. the, and then from that, I took that fabric home and uh, started making things. And, but yeah, so. Isn't that cool? She can just make things like on a sewing machine. Just, just a thing out of nothing. Like, yeah, yeah. she made pants. <laughs> Jumpsuits. Well, Bathing okay. suits. Bing. That's great. <laughs> This is, I love, I mean, I love this kind of collaboration because it's like these different skill sets kind of coming together, right? And exploding. And then you just see what you have. Mm -hmm. And I feel like I, I want to encourage people to do these more of these types of collaborations. And then like, but it struck me like, it struck me when I was seeing it too, that there was like this, um, and also in the interview that there was like uncertainty and that like, that was the place that you were starting from as like a glorious thing, not like as like a, I don't know if we know what we're doing, although maybe you did have it, had a bit of that um, at the beginning, but like this, uh, I was thinking of another poet that I, uh, Karen Soli, who's a great poet too. Um, and she's an amazing quote. And she said about her own work, about her own poetry, she said to exist in uncertainty and let it speak in a poem or a piece of prose can be depressing and scary, but I think it keeps us going back to the place of possibility where something, some small glimmer if of understanding or even accepting uh, understanding, uh, not understanding might lie. Mm -hmm. And I love that. And I wondered like, can you talk about like, not uncertainty, like I don't have the skills for this, but uncertainty as like a play, as starting off place for this piece. Like, I, th I feel, really feel like you were playing with uncertainty a lot in this piece, but in a, in a really playful, fun way. So I'd love to hear more about that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I feel like that's a, a pretty natural mode for us, maybe, um, but in, a, in an exciting way, you know? And I feel like, may, for me, I feel like we grounded through the materiality of the project. So that was the grounding. Not exactly what it would do or how it would be presented, but all I have to do is bring, you know, a bin and I'd have a list and we're gonna go to this pool and we have, you know, and so just really, I think it has a lot to do with the trust between us as well, three people, you know, where I know I like, okay, for instance, um, reading, recording the vocals of this piece, um, and not knowing, I can't really hear my voice outside of myself, right? 
uh, you know, metaphorically and physically. And and Christine was there listening. And so I just really that experience of trusting someone to hear and to tell you and to share what they're hearing and that openness and and with Chantal as well, you know, I would I, I would get like bolder and bolder because I want to just just to quickly speak to the writers out there. You know how you can just jump around into any world. <laughs> you can make anything happen in words, pretty much, especially poems. Well, when you try to do that, like as Chantal says, with like material objects suspended and things like there are practicalities. And so I would, you know, have this visual and I've suggested and you know, we're going to be spinning from the air with a giant tutu or something. <laughs> and Chantal would, and I would, I would send it out there with um, openness and honesty, but then I would really know I'll, I will respect what my collaborator says and what they hear in my request. You know, my request might not be what I think it is. Mm -hmm. So I feel like um, uncertainty, yes, but certain in our hearing each other. Does that make sense? So you can still trust this uh, relationship and this structure we built. Yeah. And then and anything can fly in. And <laughs> you can have swamp water and do something with it. Yeah. Hey, what, what was and, the weirdest, um, what was the weirdest image for you to work on? What was the most like happy accident? The thing, like you said, looking, you, you realized you were looking for the shadow. What was the thing in the film where you were like, you were like, this is an absolute accident and we love it. <laughs> I just immediately thought of the the plungers. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, of course. I mean, again, I'm uh, coming back to laughter. Uh and and another time we just laughed and laughed and laughed. Oh, did we laugh? Yeah. It was when those there was there's a pair of plungers and they in the legs, they show up here and there throughout <laughs> the, the the film. But there was one point where you you guys asked me to do jump squats while holding the plungers and in the nylons, yeah. so they're moving. So and so I'm back. jumping up and down, and these plungers are slapping against the hardwood floor. And I don't know. We just thought that was the funniest <laughs> thing, the uh, clunkiest dance. That was the best thing to sound design from a down sound design perspective, because you know what you do to sound design plungers. <laughs> plungers. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, <laughs> So I recreated it also in my studio. It's just the sound of, oh. of someone jumping the slap. <laughs> I right. just frankly like it's it, that it, this piece is so there's so many. I tried to make a list of all the contradictions and I couldn't even get there. <laughs> so I got here's what I got: fragments and wholeness, movement and stillness, bodily and ghostly, uh, working and broken, sick and healthy, exercise and atrophy, laughter and despair air and ground, uh, mm -hmm. inhabiting versus freedom from the body and absence or presence. And then I kind of, I was like, there's more, there's more. Mm -hmm. um, how did you find balance between the elegy form and then like this bonker sense of humor that you all have and that I share? I mean, there's just so many moments that was raucously funny. Um, mm -hmm. How did you kind of like, I feel like at some point you have to kind of decide, you know, where are the places that are going to be uh, more playful or less playful? Did you, was that a conscious process? You know, I, for me, I think just always letting the poem guide and I can give you a, a tangible instance. So my, my happy accident, my answer would be when we were loading the nylons with cake. Right. Which was our little Hollywood secret lard. So much, so much lard. So much lard. And it was so Not cake. Funny. Well, well, it was. The, just the icing yeah. was lard. The icing was lard. The cake was cake. Okay. Yeah. You would never want to eat that cake. Because well, there's a nasty yeah. thing. Yeah. But anyway, and then, I don't know if you remember this point, and every time I've watched it with someone, they laugh at this point, the clothesline breaks. breaks. Yeah. And we all scream. And genius, <laughs> genius. No, it was everybody. I don't even know if it was me, but it was definitely them too. Anyway, genius is like, let's keep the scream. And because it's it was so right, it, you can't script that. And it to me, I think it's the deepest, like it's the most sad image mm -hmm. is when we cut to the, it's like something has been pulled out of our hands. 
We have no control. The weight is too much. There's too much pressure. It's going to snap, right? And it just goes. And then we try to we try to lower things gently and help, but it's done. Hmm. And it's such a anyway, that's all just the poem. Right. And those and then we got to that by gesturing the poem. So the gravity is there, no matter how many plungers we use. <laughs> you know, like does that make sense? I don't mm-hmm. even know how else to say it. It just it isn't conscious. I think it's just playfully trusting and and following it if that makes sense and we fo- and following it far you can't pull back halfway right <laughs> you gotta keep stepping <laughs> because then that wouldn't have happened if we just said oh this was the shot we needed we want cake and a nylon and we'll be done but we never said that we said like let's see what happens really and so. I think I said it in the interview but somebody said you know like I mean the idea is like you have to learn something if mm. That it's a process of learning and if you're not learning why are you why are you doing it if it's all like already concluded then we don't need to learn then why are we doing this right that's christine yeah so i I think that's really super interesting too right like what are the questions that you're going in with not what what the process is but like what are the questions and what can we do to kind of think about them in a new way right i mean but the other thing you said was that the poem was I can't remember if you called it, you didn't call it, I think you called it like a sounding board or something like that. Like that the poem became a sounding board. And the question from a lot of my students was, how can someone be so unprecious about their creative writing that they're just like, oh, I'm just going to ditch this image and uh, then that's going to be done with music or that's going to be, how do you give up? I think my question is like, how do you all give up that the feeling or that authority of like uh, being decisive and then just kind of open it up to say, oh, I think we can do that with music or we don't need this line from the poem. We're going to do it some other way. How did that happen? I think the simple answer for me is it, it's here. I didn't give anything up. Right. You feel, you feel like everything's still there. It's here because it's published. This is the little book of the full poem. So I think that might be a really good way to go about a project like this, you know, have it, have it in in the page form maybe. And also what I can learn about the piece when I give up something Mm. or what what I can allow to come in, you know, would my collaborators have any fun? (laughs) I wasn't allowing things to come in, you know, shifting, reinterpreting. I mean, don't we all just write the same sentence we're just continuing the same sentence all our lives didn't someone say that we speak in one sentence mary ruffle yeah yeah so i want to open the sentence yeah you know? and also that every new book i think it was dion brand who said that every new book is a question that you didn't answer in the last book oh yeah. and i love that with this project it's like you have this book and that's an object and there's a question there and then you have this other project and there's different questions maybe that you didn't answer in the book that you're then exploring in this like other format. I think that's super, I mean, that's an amazing way to make art, right? Yeah. Mm. Let me ask you about ghosts. <laughs> I'm, I love ghosts. I'm writing, I'm working on a book about ghosts. Um, so I have a question for, oh, let's start with Chantel. I'm, I'm curious about clothing as ghosts. I just went to London last year to see the Louise Bourgeois clothing as ghosts exhibit where she talks about clothing and the clothing from her childhood that she hangs up in these kind of cells and they like belong to her mother and they belong to like her uh, family members. And like, uh, I love this quote where they talked about, um, you know, the, the, I, I was thinking specifically about the nylons mutating into different kinds of things. Like sometimes they're legs and sometimes they're, you know, like a sea creature slithering through the water or sometimes they're like seeping, Um, how did that kind of happen for you? Was that a natural, a natural process? Like, do you see clothing as ghosting? Is there like, is there a sense of that in the imagery? Yeah, absolutely. I think clothing is always in some way a stand in for the body. Um, and it's, yeah, the, the, um, there's a book I was reading and I'm bad at remembering names, so I will forget who the author is. I'll probably forget what the book is about. <laughs> but there was it was about um, history of textiles, and they had this picture 
of a shirt that was found in a pyramid and it's one of the oldest mm -hmm. garments preserved garments that mm -hmm. has been found and it was found in a way where you know when you take off your shirt like this and then you just like throw it on the floor it, it was discarded that way and um the there were still because it was linen there was still you could still see the creases of the elbow and the armpit wow. and yeah those creases like your body then creases your clothing with mm -hmm. its humidity and its heat and then like I don't know the body is always we wash it and press it and try and bring it back to not having the body in it <laughs> um because sometimes that can get gross but um <laughs> yeah I think that yeah that that association that's all the body and clothes the clothes are in, in the body and mm -hmm. like there's hardly any times where you're not touching some kind of textile even if you're naked you're you're in a towel you're in bed you're touching some kind of fabric mm -hmm. almost always so that association is like it's it's there it's it's un, like I find it's un, I've never wanted to break it but I find it's pretty hard to break that association um, yeah so. and it's, I mean that because they were saying about the Louise Bourgeois exhibit that like the suspended the, the the clothing like the fabric suspended was kind of like uh like like trying to kind of emulate the movement too of like ghostly hmm. spectral movement and it made sense but the other thing was that the clothing outlives the person mm -hmm. which is something i hadn't really thought about like that that's what we're left with these i'm left with these mm -hmm. you know these journals these objects these like tangible objects and like i'm looking at them for clues right um mm -hmm. and the, i feel like the clothing is so I don't know, the, the, the spectral is really prominent in this piece in a very subtle way, but the spectral is always there. Um, I don't know, I'm not really formulating a great question, but can we can we talk a little bit about the spectral? Like I'm I'm curious, I can see it certainly in the in the clothing, but I'm sure it's there and always too. Yeah, and I guess like the nylon, that, that's maybe a, a more of an accident too with the transparency of the nylons. It was like, oh, well this, that, ephemeral um gauzy kind of mm -hmm. ghostly mm -hmm. uh quality comes with it mm -hmm. because of the type of fabric we were using so yeah mm -hmm. well and the pattern paper i loved when the I, I don't even i think it was an accident like your window was just open we were hot we were hot and the window was open it was summer and so and trying to deal with all these this pattern paper and it just started blowing it started blowing and we're rolling and I'm like oh my god this looks amazing like because it's alive it's alive of course and all the things you made Chantal all those the 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 legs they're alive like they suddenly you just give them just a little bit of of uh, wind and they they just want to sing I guess you know you have that great moment where you're connecting the calves the, the pattern paper is like hitting the person's calves and you've got this like beautiful happy accident again. <laughs> and I, maybe I'd like to address the spectral in the sound as well and in the voice, you know? Um, I think as Christine mentioned about how the wind came to us, there were the voices, they were ghost voices, right? Mm -hmm. And and all the entire sound design, right? That's that's all coming from environments that, yeah, are, are kind of like this, the met metaphors of the poem too if that makes sense. Um, so yeah, sensual spectral, <laughs> you know, the just bo the bodily spectral. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But the, but I think in the sound, in the air and the wind and the, and in the voice, um, on this, um, piece that I worked on with Christine, when I, our first stop motion, I don't think I've ever told you this. Oh no. <laughs> no, but there's a, there's, she had done some layering of voice. So as I read the poem, like she'd done some echoing of my voice. And every time I hear it, I actually hear my mother's voice. Oh. And I've oh. never, but it's, I think it's, and I actually love that because it was more than me. It's not just me. And maybe that's another way to think about it. It's more than us, you know? It's not just, you know, these words. It's, we're inviting in a lot more. And I love, I, thank you so much for the question. I love your, your talking about work with ghosts. <laughs> Sounds I incredible. Who named it the Honeycomb Bell Corral? Is that? Well, no. Oh, look at all this. I have to, just because I have all my little, it's right here. 
<laughs> or like handwritten composition. Oh, very it's so beautiful. Is but it so? Is it? <laughs> it is. It is. And it has one single lyric. Ah. Uh, uh, <laughs> H. When in doubt, uh, no words. <laughs> That's an interesting question. How did you decide um, on what types of instruments you might want to use? Or was that, were you playing with sounds while you were also in the room recording? Like, how did that actually happen? Or were some of them post, done in post? Well, yes, a lot of, in fact, because we, when we started this, we didn't really know what we were doing. I wasn't um recording except when we were out uh, you know on location when we were at the lake and at the pool I did get some audio but I wasn't planning I wasn't getting we didn't have a sound person right it was just the three of us yeah. I mean we didn't have a yeah. person holding the yeah. getting the anything because there was no dialogue right so I was just like I'll just build it all later whatever it is it'll just be whatever <laughs> um note to self always <laughs> The recording <laughs> but it the it actually came from that first recording that hospital that recording of the this the sound of the wind and I feel like yes the suddenly it was like the wind talking to us from from your mother-in-law's hospital room like mm -hmm. the wind was was telling us right at the beginning that this is what it was and of course singing is just it's breath and so it had to be it had like I just, I knew there needed to be something that sings to that sound that, that you brought me. And so it kind of, the chorale came out of that sound. And of course yeah. I organized my disappointment <laughs> accordingly. <laughs> you know how it is, you're like, it's gonna be so amazing. <laughs> it's gonna be like, and then it's like, actually we have, it has to be executable. <laughs> You know how you're like, you know how you're like, it's going to be so complicated. It's so totally weird. Actually, we have to be able to say it. Very hard. And you amazing, like superstars. Right. That sounds like Chantel talking. We have hard. to be able to practically execute it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there was some practical aspects. But the great thing is that Chantel comes from a choral background. So it's like, boom, already. Mm -hmm. And this guy, he's afraid of nothing. There is nothing she will not do. Nothing. I should be afraid of more. <laughs> afraid of nothing. Fearlessness. That's a gift. I think that's an artist's gift. How lucky. Totally. Um, it's actually quite the opposite. <laughs> oh, goodness. But yeah. Well, we have to ask questions of the audience, but I want to get my one last question in really quickly. So I'm super curious about, so we have this text then we have this iteration and then it's installed in a gallery space. And that's really significant, I think, and important too. I'm, I was thinking a lot about fragments. We didn't get to too many, too many fragments in this con conversation, but um, thinking about like how a fragment can signify a whole, like, you know, a metonymy type of situation, like how much of a fragment do you need to make meaning? And I think this would be helpful for my prose poetry students too, like, how to work with those fragments and then seeing those fragments, those fragments of clothing, those fragments of like, you know, desks and things in the installation space. I'm super curious, like, how did you choose the way that things would look in the gallery space and how did that process work? Hmm. Um, yeah, uh, yeah, I think part of it came from the video being we repeat so many things over and over in different way in different iterations within the film that like the cake being in the nylons like one object ends up holding a lot of things like the that heavy lifting is done by the film and so we could take one or two little pieces out and because it had that support material mm -hmm. of of the film that anything we brought out of it mm -hmm. um and then we did have a little uh conversation about spoilers about um yeah what what do we want i felt strongly that we wanted to preserve those pool noodle legs in the in the roller skates to keep their surprise mm -hmm. so yeah what do you want to keep as a surprise for later and what can 
can like when you enter the gallery it you see it all at once mm -hmm. unlike with a text where you have to encounter it word by word to some extent um yeah it's it, it's visually there all at once um so hopefully i had some somehow <laughs> sort of answered your question that i don't feel like i really did but well it's almost like it feels like it's like a different, a different body is what i was feeling you know that it's like its own body it's its own body it's separate from the body of the video and separate from the body of the text too like it's got its own i don't know its own sort of life and I just remembered Jen when we were talking about it you said something I was like oh I'm going to latch onto that and that will be our guide is you were saying I want to feel like you can walk through the poem mm -hmm. what does it what what would it be like if you could walk through mm -hmm. this poem mm -hmm. and so just thinking about that like how much can you get with how little or like mm -hmm. yeah I love that I love that I think, I, I mean, I didn't get to see the gallery in person, so I got the photos of the gallery, but I still had the same impression that there is this, like, um, sp the absence and presence was very obvious because there was empty spaces, right? So you've got absence and presence constantly mm -hmm. and, like, that feeling of the the body of work, this play on the idea of, like, the body of work and the body and um and then seeing it in a gallery space is also super interesting it's like that's its own little galaxy its own separate gal it's almost like there's several galaxies happening at the same time um but yeah i think i think um i should i just have to stop talking i have to ask um other people um if they would like to uh, ask questions i think the q a is probably functional um do folks have questions i'm wondering if steve Asselin's students maybe have questions um as well i have many more questions i don't know it's chat see what's going on in there show oh, chat. here we go let's uh, open q a cool okay, okay so do you, can you see the q a questions mm -hmm. oh Marian, hi okay. Uh, Marianne, thank you to all of you. This collaborative work is truly making me cry with joy. Me too. Uh, when you lose your mother, you lose your breath. Thank you for giving us all the ability to breathe. Well said. Uh, shout out to the sign, the sign for this panel. It is so collaborative work to taking collaborative work to another dimension, which it is, um, which, uh, so I appreciate. Thank you. I'm also a huge fan of Robin Edge, although I haven't found my way to Spaghetti and Meatballs yet. My question is to ask if you're already part of Spaghetti and Meatballs before this collaboration began, and did you ever talk with Robin about this project? Oh, more collaborators. <laughs> <laughs> I was not a part of it and took some convincing to join. <laughs> I thought that was not me. I don't exercise. Uh, I'm not about that. Mm -hmm. I don't want to feel that way, but then I, I tried it <laughs> and yeah. And how do you feel now? Do you feel better? Yeah. Or, uh, yeah. It, or... You started rock climbing since then. Yeah. She yeah. climbs rocks now. I went once with my friend. I was not good, but she I climbs. enjoyed it. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, just learning. Mm -hmm. I think I was never taught how to learn a physical skill it was always gym class always felt like I was just always being tested and never being mm. taught mm. um oh, that's huge. and now I have someone who is teaching me like this is what's going on when you feel this and this is the difference between an injury and mm. just tired muscles and this is the kind of pain you're looking for and this is okay and this anyway so yeah I joined lighter these two convinced me it reminds me of like Alison Bechdel's new book, like getting really fit and dealing with uh, grief in your life and like this idea of like fitness in the body, like as a way of like, um, there was a described like reminding yourself that you're still breathing, which is like uh, something that Jen, I think you said in your, in your piece as well, like just that constant, like mm. I've got body and I'm, I'm embodied in my body and like, you know, the, all of those questions are there. Um, yeah, that's real. I, I love the idea that you're all in an exercise group. I can't wait to join this group. This is very exciting. 
It's so good. I mean, it's so terrible. We hate it. Everybody complains like, and it's Monday at five 30 and we're all like, Oh, I don't want to not to date. But Robin says, if you put your shorts on and you show up, yep. then you're in, you might as well do it. Like, absolutely. Absolutely. I'm going to, I will absolutely complain about it. <laughs> it's part of it. Yes. It's fully expected. <laughs> and then you'll just be for two days, you'll just be so strong and you'll, this is great. And then so you'll yeah. have a, at least two good days a week. <laughs> two out of five. That's not bad. Not bad. <laughs> um, okay. Anita says, uh, how did the editing process work? Did you all sit in front of the computer? Like I assume together. Yeah. Um, uh, did Christine build it along with the sound, et cetera? I assume there were some outtakes. Um, it sounds like there were a lot of outtakes, right? Yeah. <laughs> That's very sweet of you to, come to this Anita and to mm -hmm. ask a question Anita's a very wonderful animator and uh and a very yeah it's uh it was an interesting process yeah. this process was very unlike I think for any of us uh, because we were all filling multiple roles I had I was behind the camera for the first time because I got there the first day and Chantel was like you're gonna <laughs> get behind the camera and I was like what you on your hands. <laughs> yeah. Like, oh, this is crazy. And just it was all hands on deck for everything, which mm -hmm. was very kind of I found it um very uh empowering isn't necessarily the word word, but it's uh it's like you just have to push past your fear and like, oh, I don't know how to do that. Mm -hmm. Of course you do. Mm -hmm. Of course you know how to like see or hear, mm -hmm. you know? So it like humbling maybe in a way too yeah like yeah and and like I we all come with our own limitations like that part of that is I can't hold a camera steady to save my life I'm way too shaky so I need some people to like be like mm -hmm. I keep trying I keep thinking I can do it and then I could look at the footage and I'm like no this is not what I want or mm -hmm. this isn't quite so oh. speak back about the body again about yeah we have these limitations that's part mm -hmm. of the body too mm -hmm. there's things they just come with the package. Well, and limitations, as we know, in art, it's like, it's not a, sometimes you think, ah, oh, only, you know, if I had, didn't have that limitation, I could do this, whatever. Yeah. But no, the limitations are where all the really rich stuff is. I think it's like, mm -hmm. yeah, you can kind of el stick your elbow in and try to feel your way around in it, but also uh, embracing it and also like collaborating and saying hey I my hands are shaking and I can you hold this mm -hmm. it's like yes I can do that yeah mm -hmm. but my I can't open a pickle jar to save my life can you open this <laughs> I'll open the pickle Pickles jar <laughs> you hold the camera <laughs> it sounds like um it sounds like improv Oh, yeah. oh. the first rule is that you have to I mean this is just maybe this is just me coming from a theater background but you have to say yes um, and you have to try it. It doesn't mean it's going to work. It's like not to say that the experiment is always going to be like 100% perfect, but that like that you say yes and you see what your limits are, right? It's like, that's yeah. a really interesting process. Yeah. And back to the editing question. Yeah, we all sat down and edited together. And that also really freed us up to in the shooting process even if there was something where I was like, I don't know about that, but let's get it because we don't, it, it can come in, it can go out, but then we have it. Like it, mm -hmm. there's, an, you're not making a commitment to it mm -hmm. at that point, you're just exploring. So why not? Let's shoot it. And, and then mm -hmm. you see later, oh, I was wrong. This is like necessary for this one point. And boy, am I glad that we have that. Yeah. Yeah. Thought. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I feel like there's a commitment too. like you, you guys have a real, like in the poem, there's that commitment to like, I don't know what the term is. I want to use the word like review, not like as in to re-see something, you know, to like, just see it again and think about it and reconsider it and reconsider it and reconsider it and reconsider it again in different ways over and over. And like, that's something that really struck me. It's like that. And the struck the students too, like sticking with an image is so hard as a writer. It's mm -hmm. easy to discard and make an image about the moon and then make an image about the cow. You know, it's like, well, okay, but how do you, how do you stick with something and actually like see it, play with it until you can see it differently? I feel mm -hmm. like that's something that like, I, I just loved about this piece. And then like the, the it kind of ties into the wordplay too. Um, right. It's neat. Cause I was thinking about, cause your students are writing prose poems 
right? Yeah. So I was thinking about what I love in the prose poem because I'm almost exclusively working that way now. And and I think it is the way language is pressurized to be the punctuation in a way. I Because I work in like really long lines and, you know, taking it right to the end. So there's no line breaks, right? Mm -hmm. so how, what's going to pace this? So the, if the language is pacing it, then that's where the rep, rep, repetition comes in. The image is your like intersection, your little kind of um, checkpoint. Oh, I'm here again. I can go again. You know, I don't know. I was, I just thought of that today. I think I'm like, that's, it's really important because you have no hard spacing to do that. Of course you can write the post home in a million ways and you can have, but if you're just going, like I'm trying to do just pacing with the voice and language, then yeah. and music, right? Music. Like I'm just thinking about the, uh, uh, winning, losing, sprouting, budding, beating, breathing, beautifying, bleeding. Like it's got that, it already has that movement and that music. Mm. It's, it's sort of there. And yet you're re-seeing, uh, like reviewing to re-seeing re these words in like a brand new way every time. I think that's, mm. that's an incredible. I just love, I love this piece. I love this piece. Um, oh, sorry, Steve. Uh, we had a question given that the poem is written in free verse. Is there any thought when moving to a recital video format to retaining or changing any, well, this is a good question, uh, changing anything about the rhythm, homonyms, or other oral effects of the original text? Well, that's, <laughs> that's such a great question, Steve, because holy, I think like when um, Christine had said about editing in the air, mm. going back to the vocal recording at the booth, I had to eventually just like, I was reading so strictly to the page originally. And it was so amazing when Christine suggested gently, <laughs> um, can, if you close your eyes, can you see it or something? You gave me ways to enter the words with just voice and just, I don't know if telling is the word, but if I'm saying this to someone and it's not a poetic script, you know what I mean? How will I just say it? You know, if that, mm -hmm. if it's just, I don't know if that makes any sense, but I'm not reading line breaks. I'm not reading my intentional, because when someone reads a page, it's silent, right? But when it's coming just from my voice, no page, right into someone's ear, um, it really helped to visualize the scene and say it, if that makes sense. So you're, I'm not, it's not self-conscious, not self-conscious at all. It was speaking. I With really no poetry voice, right? Yeah, I wish. Poetry voice. I know that's the hardest thing, right? Because because it is, it's a defense mechanism. It's like we do it in singing or we do it like it's a very much some a place of safety, right? Where you're like, if I just sort of do it like this, this is how. It's a habit. It's, it's a habit. habit. It is done. This and, is how it is done. I'll be doing it right or something. You can do it any old damn way you want. Oh. <laughs> Disrupt okay. the system, kids. <laughs> And it's Try it while you're doing jump squats. <laughs> yeah. yeah, join the exercise brigade. <laughs> Two out of three like it. <laughs> <laughs> it's not decided. Um, I think that's a great, okay, I think that's all the questions we have and also all the time we have. Um, we are, I'm so sad. This is such an amazing conversation. Thank you. I just have to say one more time, thank you for this beautiful piece of art thank you thank you and, and you're you're gonna be coming here and we're gonna hang around with you yes i need friends winnipeg friends <laughs> very excited excited that we get to have you, yeah. oh, you i'm so happy um so i just wanted to plug one more time uh just housekeeping that this show is still going to be open until february 16th i believe and the hours are 12 to 4 at Gallery C103. So if you haven't seen the piece already, I mean, I think this conversation is inspirational. Um, go and take a look at it in the gallery space and see it. It's quite an experience. Um, and also we have an upcoming, uh, I'm so, I'm, I wish I was there for this, an upcoming Care Tag Poetry Workshop, mm -hmm. which I just love on February 10th from 1 to 2.30. It's in person on the fifth floor of the University of Winnipeg Library. Do you want to just really quick somebody tell me a little bit about what that is going to be or what that's going to look like? Yeah, we're going to write 
poems that are so small, <laughs> the opposite of a prose poem, <laughs> that you can put it on a little tiny piece of paper and fold it into a book and sew it on your clothes and wear it home. They're, they're washable and yeah, they're- They're washable, uh, wearable uh, art. And yeah. I, I promise you, you're gonna write something that'll surprise you. I can promise that. I think I can promise that. I love that. I think yeah. all my students, you should go to that. That sounds amazing. Yeah. Um, it reminds me of Lindsay Zervogel's love letters that she just left in the library. She'd go to the library and leave love letters to books and then other people could go to the library and pick them up and read about them. Mm -hmm. I, love, mm -hmm. I, love, I love that idea. But I also love the idea of a care tag in a piece that you're actually wearing against your body. I think that's like such a beautiful workshop. Mm -hmm. <laughs> It'll be it's fun. gonna be really fun that's Chantal will be sewing yeah we'll be typing we're doing it on a typewriter too yeah don't worry if you oh. can't sew or have never sewed well there will be helpful hands there so yeah amazing amazing thank you so much to all of you and thank you so much to gallery c103 um this is an, an a gallery c103 was when i first came for my job interview it was the reason that i wanted to teach. It was a black futurist, Afrofuturist exhibit. And I thought, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, this is, I want to teach here. This is cool. Um, so uh, thanks for making me want to teach in Winnipeg. <laughs> but like, um, <laughs> thanks for including me. I'm, I don't know if Jennifer would like to say anything, but I think um, we can just uh, close with that. I'm sure if you have other questions, you could direct them to Jennifer and um, she could maybe pass them on to the artists if there's anything that we missed. Um, but other than that, thank you. Thank you very much. And uh, this was a great event. Thank you to all three of you. I look forward to hanging out when we get back to Winnipeg. Yeah, Me too. Us too. <laughs> Thanks so much, Sadie. Thanks so much. Thank you, Jennifer. Good night. Bye.